2023 has been one of the best years for gaming ever. But one of the absolute worst for the industry. Let's talk about it. I feel like I don't even need to ask you why we are talking about this, Tam. I was going to say, I don't know whether to laugh or to cry. We try and be like light, lighter here. And yeah. Like, we talk about serious topics, but we try and have that. I'm so sorry. Right? I'm so sorry. I am. We try and have the kind of like casual kind of approach to it and have fun with it, but there's there's no fun to be had in this in this man like it is awful what has happened this year to the games industry yeah it feels so weird because like if you look at the output of the games that we've had this year on GameSpot alone multiple tens out of ten yeah. and then we've got over six thousand that we know of because a lot of places haven't actually reported yeah, proper numbers. Just, no. At least over 6,000 developers have been laid off yeah. this year alone. You, I, I went to a website, videogamelayoffs.com, I think it is, but, which has been tracking all the layoffs. And the amount of studio name question marks next to it is very, like, telling, ominous. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, this week, uh, Monday morning, was the news that Bungie was cutting, I think, between 8 to 10% yeah. of their workforce. We've had Unity. Uh, and in terms of like a huge, huge layoffs, Epic, Epic. Sony, Media Molecule, Volition is gone. Volition is gone. Riot's had them. Activision Blizzard has had them. And then there's wider layoffs across companies like Meta and Microsoft, which have gaming divisions within them. And mm. so the true scale, the six thousand number is being thrown around, but the the reality is it's, it's yeah. way more than that. Yeah, and like to get the business economic side of it out of the mm -hmm. way. I think the dissonance, dissonance that comes from a lot of people, the shock that comes to a lot of people when they see this and they see that it comes from the fact that the games are making a lot of money. There was a time where there was like, it seemed like games were growing in a really mm -hmm. major way. And let's look specifically at the COVID period. There was quite a healthy uptick in oh, yeah. for New obvious consoles, reasons. Yeah. Uh, a lot of huge games. Digital sales were Digital higher sales because people weren't going in. to stores and physical and that kind of stuff. And people were turning to games as a form of entertainment when they couldn't go outside and, you know, be miscreants on the street. Yeah, or and a way to connect with people. the clubs and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, I was hitting up the <laughs> clubs in Animal going, Crossing. Yeah. So they see these uptakes and they're like, bye, 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 sell, sell, sell. And they like, so acquisition started to happen yep. in that period. There was like a bigger investment. And so the acquisitions that happened include EA purchased Codemasters, mm -hmm. Xbox purchased Bethesda and Activision and Blizzard, Activision. Take Two bought Zynga and uh, Embraceable everyone Embraceable else. Embraceable everyone and more most relevant to this discussion is mm -hmm. Sony bought Bungie. Mm -hmm. And these are billion dollar acquisitions. Mm -hmm. Big money. A bunch of new studios also popped up, right? Yep. Like a lot of VC investment, yeah, ver venture capital investment, and also like people taking payouts from these mm -hmm. acquisitions and making up something new. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, the talent pool is the same talent pool. Mm. So then there's like a arms race and like a bidding war over like the talent, where it's mm -hmm. like higher um, wages are being offered, better benefits or subsidies or whatever it may be oh, to try yeah. and get people want, to go places. Like the real hotspot for that kind of stuff is Montreal. Like yeah. the Montreal game dev scene in terms of hiring talent yeah. is so incredibly competitive. Yeah. So it was like people trying to get from the same pool of mm -hmm. talent, putting more money into getting that talent, which is kind of that expansion is laying the groundwork for an eventual implosion. Mm -hmm. And in 2022, things changed in the world to a degree with the state of lockdown. Mm -hmm. The economy changed in a major way because of world events. We had wars happening, mm -hmm. you know, and that drives up the prices of food and mm -hmm. all these kind of other major resources. And also people are up in the club and back at amusement parks and arcades mm -hmm. again to a degree. So, you know, there's a natural dip, mm -hmm. but that's where these major kind of investments start to fall on their face because now you that dip is just yeah. enough to make it so like you're not earning the the required margins to make up for the money spent got a piece of shareholders yep and that's when the exec for executives that's a case of cold calculus mm -hmm. like they make these decisions and it's done yeah they never pay attention to the human cost yeah which is making video games less inviting exciting and sustainable as a place to be so let's talk about the important thing which is the human cost of this it has been truly heartbreaking i mean you know just in terms of people that we know people that we look up to hmm. and people that we don't know but who have done incredible things on the games that we love the impact on mental health that that has on the people who are impacted but also the people who 
are not impacted and the people yeah. who are still there and left behind it's like I said rug pulled out from underneath you but it is truly that you know you are hoping that you get a good severance you are hoping that your employer gives you um, in the case of the United States medical yeah uh, insurance for some period after because otherwise in some cases uh, it'll just stop stop yeah I think that was the case with volition yep. like they did it on the last day of the month so they weren't necessarily covered yeah. and then you have to like also think about like weird schemes that are happening mm-hmm. like in the bungee case like if you had shares that weren't were invested invested v- vested you'd lose them and, and they, they would reverted default back to, to bungee. Benji, bungee that sounds like you got rid of a bunch of people so you could get those shares mm-hmm. back and then you also have executives from that company being like oh it's so sad and that yeah, we, we had to do them. this and every reply is like did you take a pay cut pete yeah yes or no chances are probably didn't probably like not. that kind of stuff as people who have i mean like this is not some unique trauma that we face everyone's been to it but as people who have been through this version mm-hmm. of layoffs and like acquisitions and waiting to see whether you have a job or not yeah the accumulative damage it does to your kind of sense of self-worth mm-hmm. your faith and confidence in yourself is immeasurable mm-hmm. like and in an industry that is contingent on people being able to express creativity that is a gunshot like mm-hmm. to the to their head when it comes to this kind of acquisition and, and then layoff uh, loop in terms of you know game creation itself like you are losing talent you are losing knowledge mm-hmm. um, some of the folks who I mean we're just using Bungie as an example because they are the most recent and like in the news but you know some of the folks that have been there for over like 20 years yeah, and exactly. like people who are instrumental in the dna of games like halo and destiny the thing that i find quite shocking is i've seen an alarming amount of people on x <laughs> which i shouldn't be surprised because that place is an absolute shite hole right now mm. of people grinding for like interactions so they can monetize but weirdly not really seeing how it impacts them I don't think you they realize that the people that are being laid off mm-hmm. are the people who are fighting to make the game better and mm-hmm. make more creative decisions and try and push new ideas and that kind of like move making the game as good as it can be the people who are doing the layoff are the people who want to use the same repeated frameworks for gameplay make everything monetized mm-hmm. or ai whatever the people who want to make the money are the people who are doing the layoff and those are the people that you are for some reason jumping uh, you know to to take the bullet for it doesn't make any sense yeah. like the the lack of empathy that is in that i've seen over the last few days a, a week months. or so months and years it yeah, seems to be happening a lot in response to a lot of these um, mm. kind of layoff stories is staggering now more than ever we need to kind of get behind these kind of people who are being laid off and and ensure that they find a new place within mm. this industry and don't feel kind of demoralized seeing how disposable mm-hmm. you can be in this industry is like is that t- going to turn away new talent because they can see how other people have been treated like regardless of loyalty to the company yeah. or you know all the hours put in it's like it can be cast aside and that sucks the games industry losing out yeah. on potential like the next big thing comes yeah. from an idea from someone who saw what's happening in games and, and doesn't even want didn't it. even bother yeah that yeah. is that is the most crushing part of it where you mm-hmm. see these young designers or developers or artists or whatever that may be coming up you know and then looking and being like maybe i should go and work in another industry because this one is this one is falling apart we put resources in the description box um take this.org is a mental health charity that specializes in video games and they have Mm -hmm. a lot of amazing uh, resources about what happens if you're impacted by layoffs uh, as well as other mental health resources there are everyone is banding together like there is a really cool movement happening like on Twitter, on Mm. LinkedIn, on Discord, on Slack. People are making groups to help find jobs for the new people, uh, for people who have been laid off or impacted. Um, There is a giant Excel spreadsheet of current open roles in the industry um, and a lot of other resources. So that is all linked down below. And I think it's, you know, be kind. Yeah, be kind to each other. And I there's the one thing I love is like I do see a lot of developers who aren't, you know, 
executives anywhere but mm -hmm. i see a lot of like developers that are being like hey we've got openings here or here yeah. you know speak to me or retweet I'll, I'll refer you yeah, i will look you. over your resume yes. i will um i will you know signal boost and the other hard thing to ask people to do in this situation is like because it is quite bearing your soul out there like i know it's difficult but if you can mm -hmm. like tell people that you're looking for jobs mm -hmm. or like because there are like, i retweet and you retweet mm -hmm. people who are looking for jobs there's developers out there always looking for people who might not see you unless you say hey i'm out here mm -hmm. and there's also developers that will retweet and and like share them um, i've definitely seen people like mm -hmm. almost a, f a bunch of times actually see like oh i'm, I'm now working here yeah. after like I weeks saw this ago on, yeah. weeks ago being like i need a job and i'm seeing an interaction between them and another person yeah. so all hope is not lost i think we just need to be a bit more emp empathetic and also stop buying shit man stop buying companies because you think you're going to be the next apple behave well, thank you for watching this week's episode of Spot On. A uh, bit of a tough one. Uh, obviously, uh, we really hope folks who have been impacted get uh, themselves sorted soon. Mm -hmm. um, the show will be back next week. You won't be. I'm going to be in the UK, I'm for afraid, a couple weeks, for a couple yeah. weeks. Um, so I'll it, figure out something. I'll do like a puppet thing. where it's just. I have a puppet. Yes. <laughs> Lucy puppet. <laughs> it's going to be hosted by Tam and the puppet of me that <laughs> yeah. he had made. Um, but yeah, if you if you see anyone like looking for a job and like putting themselves out there, be kind, uh, signal boost, etc. I feel like we've hammered home that point, mm -hmm. but you know, it's very important. Um, I'm over on Twitter, X, wherever, at Lucy James Games. I'm at Tomorrow H. We'll see you next time.